guys, welcome back into the channel. In today's video, we're going to be starting a new series that we have not done before on MLB The Show in any year. We're starting on MLB The Show 23 today, and I'm going to be exploring some hidden gem players for you. Players that you're going to want to know about to be able to acquire that are going to provide a sneaky good impact to your team, to your roster in franchise mode in MLB The Show 23. To start off with today, we're going to go through the first base position. This is going to operate much like my Hidden Gems series on Madden, where we're going to go through 10 players at the first base position today that are going to be helpful to you in franchise mode in one way or another that might not appear outright as the best player for your team because of a low overall, because of their age and various different factors, and we'll point those out as we go, and we'll get into some players at first base that you really should know about in order to help your franchise. Real quick to start off this video, I want to emphasize some of the criteria that we're looking at in this video. We will take a look at the player's age, we'll take a look at their overall, their specific ratings, but I want you guys to know that this will operate a little bit different in the fact that these players can stick around for longer in MLB than they can in other games where we do this series on, and so you might get players that can be sneaky good that are not just super young players that you can develop quickly. It's also pretty easy to go out there and find some A or B potential players that you can develop. So again, keep that in mind as we go through. One of the first players that I want to point out to you guys is Daniel Vogelbach, who in this roster is on the Mets. This is a player that can be extremely helpful to you as a first baseman and as a DH player. They've actually given him some nice upgrades to his contact recently that make him very serviceable. He's got 63 contact versus righties now, which is actually pretty high for a power hitter and 76 power on that side. Those two things combined alone make him a very good user bat in franchise mode if you're looking for a cheap plug and play type of an option. He's also got 99 discipline, which is really going to help him out in simulations. It's going to allow him to produce better at the plate whenever you simulate and those types of things. And those ratings are all going to combine to be a good user player, of course. And he's only a 66 overall. He's a D potential. So he's probably not going to hang around at a very good overall for very long, but he's 30 years old. So you can certainly get a few years of production out of this guy if he's playing well enough. The next player that I wanted to talk about is Derek Hall, who's on the Phillies in this roster. Derek Hall is a 67 overall with D potential, but he's only 27 years old. So again, you're going to get a few more years out of this guy than you even would with Daniel Vogelbach, but a very similar player in regards to his stats. He's got 65 contact versus right and 80 power versus right, but he's actually a little bit more serviceable against lefties as well with 42 contact and 48 power. And that's not going to be good by any means. You're probably not going to be hitting well against lefties much at all, but it is nice that that kind of boosts him up a little bit. And against righties, this can be a very useful player to have in your lineup and a player that you can plug in that's not going to cost you a lot to acquire. In fact, it's going to be one of the cheapest players out there that you could acquire. And you can plug him into your lineup and you know that he's going to produce a little bit if you're user controlling him. In simulation, he might not do quite as well as Vogelbach will because he doesn't really have the discipline stats and those types of things that Vogelbach has, but nonetheless, you might still see pretty solid production out of this guy, no matter what you're doing in franchise mode, just based on those contact and power numbers alone as a 67 overall. I also really wanted to point out Jared Walsh here for you guys, who is on the Angels. He's a 74 overall C potential. This guy has the capability of also playing left field and right field, which is kind of nice if you're looking for a little bit more of a flexible player, and he's got half decent fielding ability. So that's, you know, kind of nice to have that option, but nonetheless, this is going to be a player that boasts some pretty solid stats as a 74 overall at 29 years old, again, is going to be super cheap for you to acquire and is going to have some life left to him if you sign him to a multi-year contract. 72 contact versus righties and 75 power versus righties. He's also got 62 power versus lefties, so you're not sacrificing a ton of power on that opposite side, but again, he's going to be productive against righties, which 
which is primarily what you're going to be going up against. He has decent vision, discipline, and batting clutch stats at 52, 52, and 72. So again, another player that actually has some potential to do well in simulation for you as well. So a little bit flexible for you. This is a player that could, could fit into your lineup in a couple of different ways. And he's, like I said, really not bad defensively either. So he's not going to be a liability out there. The next player that I really want to point out to you guys that I love getting on my team in pretty much every franchise that I'm in is Williams Astadio. Now his rating has dropped a little bit in recent years. He's not as serviceable as he used to be, but he provides a lot of value in different areas. His bat is not as good now as it used to be, but he does still have 54 contact and 62 contact and, you know, half decent power on both sides. So he's a little bit flexible at the plate, not as good as you might like, but he's going to provide value in other areas. Again, he's got 99 vision, which is going to help him in simulation type stuff. He's got 66 batting clutch, which is fantastic. Decent bunting ability if you're looking for a player that can do that for you in your lineup. And then defensively, he's super flexible. As a 66D potential player, he's got 64 fielding, 65 arm. His accuracy is at 70, his reactions at 72. So he can play defensively pretty well. And he has so many secondary positions. He can basically play everywhere. Catcher, second base, third base, left field, right field. So flexibly, he is a fantastic option for you at basically no cost that can plug into your lineup in a pinch whenever you need. The fifth player on this list that I want to mention is Evan White of the Mariners, a player that is going to be a more defensive focused player in case that's the type of player that you're looking for, whether it be a defensive substitution or somebody that's just not going to be a liability playing defensively at first base, because I know we've all run into those problems at times where your first baseman is great at the plate, but has become a liability. And so that player becomes a DH and you don't really have somebody to play at first base. Well, insert Devin White, who's a first baseman, like I said, for the Mariners, a 65 overall C potential who's 26 years old. So he does still have room for growth and he has the potential to go up to a pretty decent overall. And you can actually focus on his stats at the plate with training and things like that and make him more serviceable on that end. You're not really going to get much better than this as a first baseman with 86 fielding, 73 arm accuracy, 89 reaction. Obviously his arm strength is not the best, but he's not going to be making a ton of throws. He's going to be able to react very well at first base to balls hit down the line, and that's going to be really helpful to you defensively. So definitely a player that I think you should know if you care about the defensive side of things within your franchise. The next player that I can't help but point out is Bobby Bradley, the first baseman that is currently listed as a free agent on this roster. This is a guy that's a 64 overall that has B potential, so he can get up to a relatively solid overall, but that's not just the reason that I'm picking him out. He is 26 years old, and so he has t development time left, but he's serviceable in many other ways. His bat needs a lot of work with 44 contact and 26 contact, but if you just focus on the right side of the plate, you'll be able to get him up to a solid rating, but his power is really good on both sides. And that's mainly why I wanted to point it out is because you don't find a lot of lower overall players that have really good power on both sides. So 65 and 69 power for a 64 overall 26 year old with B potential is going to grow into a really solid power hitter if you really commit to it. He's got decent discipline already. And then his defensive side of the ball is actually pretty solid as well for a 64 overall with B potential, 56, 56, 58, and 60. So again, in a player that could round out into a very solid ball player within MLB The Show franchise mode. And of course, we can't make a first base list without mentioning Harold Castro, the first baseman that's out here for the Rockies affiliate in their minor league system. Uh, 80 contact versus right, 76 contact versus left. He's not going to be able to bring a lot of power to that and unfortunately not a lot of speed to go with it. So he's not the ideal contact hitter, but he does serve a purpose with 80 contact versus right and 76 versus left. And at an age of 29, I could see this guy being serviceable for a lot of years, actually. If you sign him for a cheap contract or something like that, even with regression, he's going to remain serviceable year over year over year. And so you could honestly plug him in even as a DH type of a player. He does have the flexibility like Astadio did 
uh, with many secondary positions, being able to play pretty much every secondary position. In fact, second base, third base, shortstop, left center, and right field. As a 64 overall D potential, this guy is another kind of plug and play that actually provides a good amount of value. You'll see a lot of players like this that don't have that contact at the plate or don't provide any type of power or anything like this. And this is a guy that, again, for a very cheap price, is going to be able to service your team in a, a lot of different ways. And of course, with a couple of spots left on this list, I can't help but mention some prospects. This one is going to be a D potential prospect, but if we can get past that D potential for a second and look at the fact that he's a 63 overall 22 year old, so he does still have potential to go up, that can also play in the outfield, and then we can take a look at his stats and say, well, yeah, I might be able to actually do well with this player and make him get beyond that D potential, make his potential go up higher, and he can serve a very good role. This is a guy that's going to provide a lot of athleticism, which is a rare quality quality to find for a player that can play first base with 84 speed and good defensive ability and still at 22 years old with that 40 and 45 contact 52 and 58 power this guy actually has a lot of potential upside it's just going to take getting his potential up and getting this player some training time and some playing time to get them to a better point I typically am going to shy away from highlighting the obvious prospects at all of these positions but at a 63 overall I think Spencer Torkelson is a good prospect to highlight with the next to last spot on this list because at 63 overall a potential 23 years old it's not like he's the craziest rated prospect in the world but he does provide a good bit of flexibility and I have personal experience with this player he has that ability to play third base as well as all of the outfield positions he comes with a little bit of speed for first base which ain't bad at 62 and again I think that people might shy away from this specific prospect because they don't see crazy contact or power or athleticism or defensive ability so there's no specific reason that somebody would latch on to this player he's more so a little bit of a rounded player but not a well-rounded player if I uh, could put it that way and I've gotten him up into the 80s and 90s to be a very very good first first baseman it just takes a little bit of development and a little bit of commitment to this guy but a name that you should certainly know if you are looking to find a player that already has the development the potential to get up into the 80s and 90s and if you guys want with this final list the discount version of Torkelson who is that a potential player look no further than the Mariners Robert Perez Jr. who is a C potential at roughly the same overall a 63 overall who can also play third base, left field, and right field at 22 years old. This player is very similar in stats. In fact, there's not much difference here between him and Torkelson, who is that A potential player, except that Torkelson has a little bit better stats in that vision discipline type of category, whereas Perez is going to be very similar at the plate. A rounded player, a decently rounded, well-rounded player for what I would consider a C potential 63 overall prospect to be. So, 50 contact on both sides 50 plus power on both sides you don't get a whole lot better than that with a c potential guy that is super young and then also 65 plus on his fielding his arm and 60 plus on arm accuracy and his reaction is really really good that means that this guy is going to be serviceable pretty much already defensively at any level that you put him at and very soon with just a little bit of time he's going to be very solid at the plate this has the potential to be a really really good steal and I'm actually kind of glad that we came upon this guy in the last spot on this list because this might actually be the best hidden gem of all of them at first base a player that you definitely want to pick up and put into your farm system because he's number one not going to cost a lot and number two actually has a lot of potential upside based on where his stats are at right now so again I hope that this is uh, helpful to you guys in some way I hope that you guys enjoyed this list List. I just realized as I was getting to the end here that I forgot to point out if any of these players had any quirks. So I apologize for that, but I'll know to look at that in my future videos. Nonetheless, those are 10 players that you should be on the lookout for at first base that can help you in franchise mode in MLB The Show 23 under the current roster. So as always, I hope you guys have a good one. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.